And so let's listen to a little bit of Francesca Fiorentini. I'm so really angry about this week. Oh my God. If you were lucky enough to not care about Twitter, not have a Twitter handle, not know who Jimmy Dore is, bless your heart. You might just want to go make a sandwich right now. You might just want to go take a nap for five minutes. You might just want to do anything else. Do anything else because it's probably more productive. And I honestly don't want to talk about this, but I'm going to. Uh, because it has a little bit to do with me and a little bit to do with my guests who I have on. So we're seeing the great unmasking of the boutique left. And Francesca Fiorentini, I like her. I think she's smart. I think she's funny. I think she's, you know, intelligent. And she's unique. She's, you know, definitely her own person. And you can see how, you know, when she's in a room, even when she's at the TYT desk, you can just see how, you know, she's, she's a star. She just shines. So I like Francesca Fiorentini. And I also, she got to me. I listened to her and, um... Uh, I'm going to talk about what she said when it comes to Jimmy Dore. The first thing I want to mention, well, let's keep on listening to um, But broadly, what I am mentioning about is uh, what, what to me is a pretty bald-faced, bad-faith attempt to divide the left. Uh, at a okay, so bald-faced attempt to divide the left. Okay, so that's, does Francesca Fiorentini actually think Jimmy Dore is like, you know what, I'm going to divide the left. He's sitting there just being like Dr. Evil coming up with these damn plans. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pressure Nancy Pelosi to get Medicare for all for the American people so that the left will be divided. <laughs> That's not his intent. That is not his motivation. See, you know, maybe he wants clicks and money or whatever, but it, I think he's genuine. I think he actually, he's gone through hardship. He wants universal health care for all of us at a time when we need to be coming together around uh, fighting for the American people, uh, when we need to be coming together to uh, work with the progressive squad members that we've successfully gotten elected. So she's saying that instead of dividing the left, we should just go for unity and solidarity. Unity for unity's sake is bullshit, okay? So you got to be united with progressive people who wants to go in the same direction that you want to go. I want Medicare for all for America. And this issue to me, just like a lot of issues, I'm, it's going to bug me until it's fucking done. And so if you ever had to accomplish anything, you know, you got to keep on it, think about it, keep working at it, keep going, you know, hitting the grindstone. And then, you know, after a while, you should have something built. So unity and solidarity for, you know, unity and solidarity's sake is not good enough. She's saying it's a bold-faced effort to divide the left. She's starting off incorrectly. So she's going to make this all about Jimmy Dore, and I think that's her biggest, you know, that's the biggest thing that she's wrong about. Um, no. Now is a time for purity politics. Now is a time, apparently, to antagonize our progressive allies in Congress. All over a floor vote over Medicare for all. So this is... So all over, just to, okay, so she was talking about solidarity with the squad. Yeah, we should work with the progressives if they're progressive. And if they're not progressive, then we need to put pressure on those areas where they aren't progressive. So, yeah, the squad is our greatest hope. Uh, I don't know them, you know, my uh, representative is Lauren Boebert, a far right winger. So shit, you know, the damn progressives is like shit, at least we got some progressives in there. But uh, that's the thing, is, uh, do, is there any hope for America? Do we have hope for America? Will the squad get shit done? Or will the squad's progressiveness and their efforts and their tactics essentially render them ineffective? This is the discussion, right? Should the squad, specifically AOC, try to withhold their vote for Nancy Pelosi as Speaker and then force a vote for Medicare for All on the House floor? Just a question, right? Do you want Bernie care or not? Do you want a public option or not? Joe Biden said he's for a public option, so we should just get this health care shit taken care of right in the fucking beginning. Push for Bernie care. If we don't get Bernie care, we'll get fucking public option, and now we got universal health care. So we got the fucking thing. We can get universal health care this time. Which will definitely fail. So there's just that. Um, on this debate, I definitely stand in the no camp on that, but not strongly. Like, I don't think it's... I think... 
a vote on Medicare for All on the House floor could be one of the many tools. There's, uh, women got the right to vote because they threw the question up, just jokingly, hey, you guys going to vote for this? What, women's right to vote? Yeah, right, let's put it up there and see what happens. Oh, shit, it just passed. Women's right to vote accidentally passed, accidentally got, so it wasn't through a bunch of organizing and, you know, hitting the pavement, pounding the streets and knocking on doors. It happened because the internal mechanisms of the fucking Senate, they pushed for the vote. Now they got to vote. Now they got to say, do they stand for it? Do they stand against it? So the point I want to make before I get further into this is that Jimmy Dore, how he plays power politics and why this is Jimmy Dore's moment, not Gene Cugar. Gene Cugar said vote for Hillary Clinton, right? Hillary was going to be our savior. So Gene Cugar... That's just a difference of opinion, but it's, it's going to sh go to the tactic of putting pressure and using your vote and using your, you know, power that you have. What power do we have? We have the power at the ballot box. We have the power to get the Democrats to listen to us by voting for the Green parties and the Jill Stein. So Jimmy Dore supported Jill Stein in 2016, and I'm going to call this the Jill Stein principle. You only vote for the good candidates. Why vote for the lesser of the two evils when you can vote for the greater good? Jill Stein said that over and over again. Well, the Jill Stein principle to me is I will only vote for people I believe in. I will only vote for the good candidates. If I don't like you, if I don't know you, I'm not going to just vote for you. So this is, you know, imagine if everybody started using that as a benchmark. Yeah, I go vote. Yeah, I do my duty. But uh, if there's two people and I don't know either one or if both of them are assholes, I'm not going to say, well, I'm going to hold my nose and pick one just so I can feel like I'm on the winning team. So, Jimmy Dore, for 2016, the reason why he was for Jill Stein was because he's using the power of his vote. He's a citizen. He's got one little tiny vote, and he wanted a green America. He wanted a progressive America. And then 2020, I'm not sure who he voted for, but with the Jill Stein principle, by putting the pressure on the Democrats, by supporting Jill Stein, it's, that's the tactic that he is using right now. We've got to use the power that we have, and we can either give Pelosi our vote and then, you know, kiss her ass and hope that we get something, but that's what happened with Obama. That's what happened with Bill Clinton. They, you know, talked down the progressives. So the progressives don't really have any representation because Joe doesn't like the progressives. The Republicans don't like the progressives. So if the progressives are going to have any power whatsoever, it's got to come out of the progressive caucus or the, you know, the squad, and then they have to get the rest of the country to go along. So this is, you know, it's an uphill battle. But Jimmy Dore is the right man for the right moment at the right time because he used his vote. He used the power that he had before the election, which was correct. And then here you have Nancy Pelosi, who's about to get an election, and nobody even mentioned, hey, let's not vote for Pelosi. Joe Biden barely won. The House almost lost seats. Why the fuck would you keep Miss Capitalist and Peerless in there? Chuck her out. Chuck her out right now and send a message to Joe Biden that we progressives ain't fucking around. So I think Jimmy Dore is the exact, the exactly the right man for the right. So he's the one that come up with the idea because he's the one thinking outside the box. He's the one thinking how can we as a citizen use our power. So that's the Jimmy Dore principle, okay? So this is, you know, it's obviously a good tactic. Everybody else keeps coming up with about 100 other tactics, right? Ben Dixon says he could have used a squat to raise $30 million. David Sirota, he says he could have set up a presidential commission and we could have talked about Medicare at the end of the year. So everybody's got all these other, you know, ideas about another, well, we could do it this way, we could do it that way. But none of them are popular, none of them are simple, none of them are catching on like this idea has. This idea has started the conversation. This is the beginning of the conversation. And, um, and let's carry on, because she did, she did get to me a little bit. Used ...to try and push for Medicare for all broadly, even though it will fail. Um, the reason I lean no is because um, no major organization that is for and has worked on Medicare for all these many, many years has come out in favor of this strategy. Um, not the nurses union, physicians for universal health care, and I look to them. I look to 
So that's an important point right there. She's saying a lot. So Francesca Fiorentina is saying she's pro-Medicare for all. She wants Medicare for all. But I don't think she thinks about it like me. Like, if we don't get it, then this country sucks, and we got to get it, and we got to keep pushing for it and push for it until we get the motherfucking thing. So, I don't, uh, yeah, people can just, Voss said, oh, I support Universal, I support Medicare for All, yeah, I support it, you know, because of this and that, but then he was against this idea, too. So, uh, are you all still pushing for it, or is it just kind of an idea, like, do I agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. There's a difference between, you know, agreeing with an idea and advocating for an idea. So, she's in favor of Universal Health Care, she's in favor of Medicare for All. So I think she's in favor of the idea of the issue that we're talking about. Then the only other question is the tactic, right? So is it Pelosi? She's trying to protect Pelosi. And that's not what it is. It's all about Jimmy Dore to Francesca Fiorentini. Now, the point that she had just made that I want to point it out, that she says that she doesn't listen to YouTube or Twitter. She listens to the nurses' unions or the physicians for universal health care. So, I mean, I don't know if there's a, you know, they got a public group and making a bunch of public statements, and then what are they pushing for? How come they're not pushing for Medicare for all? But that's what Francesca Fiorentini, that's, that's her method. That's how she says she thinks about things. So she, I guess, reads the blogs for the nurses' unions, and she reads the blogs for the physicians for, the, you know, for universal health care. Now, AOC had mentioned that all the groups fight for universal health care never demanded universal health care. So, yeah, what the fuck is going on with that? Now, that, I think that's a good point. You know, if there's the smart people, who are you listening to? Who do you trust? Hubba, 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 who do you trust? So, Jimmy Dore and Francesca Fiorentini has a personal beef. And so this is why I sort of feel for Francesca Fiorentini because they had a personal beef and it was about Syria and it's on Twitter. But there's, she has a journalist friend and she said that her journalist friend was in Syria. Jimmy Dore calls him or her a CIA operative and that put his life in danger. And that reminds me of Dick Cheney and the Valerie Plame, you know, Plame Gate. Dick Cheney had out of the CIA, you know, Valerie Plame used to be CIA, and there's something about Morris or Wilson or some shit. Dick Cheney said some shit that out of the CIA operative, and people are like, you know, that's fucking dangerous, you know? And if they're not a CIA, you know, if Jimmy Dore pointed out this independent journalist is not a CIA operative, that does, you know, where did he get his information from? Where did that come from? Is that true? And if you know, if it's not true, then fuck. Jimmy Dore is sitting there saying that this independent journalist in the middle of Syria is a CIA operative. If somebody had read that, that could have been dangerous. That could have been, you know, super fucked up. That's Francesca Fiorentini's position. She has a personal beef with Jimmy Dore. This seems like an argument which, okay, I could see how you would want to hate the person forever and ever, but this is going to be Francesca Fiorentini's moment, the time to rise above Right? This is Francesca's moment to keep her own fans and then take Jimmy Dore's fans away. That's the tactic. Jill, Jill Stein says, if you wanted the votes for the people that voted for Green Party, then you should have spoke our language. You should have got us on your side. And so this is how Francesca could take Jimmy Dore's fans. Be on the side of Medicare for All. Rise above it. Look, Jimmy was an asshole to me, and, but I still believe that America needs Medicare for All. He started the conversation. It doesn't have to do with Jimmy. We want Medicare for all. It's going to be about Bernie Care and the public option and Joe Biden and about the U.S. government. So if she's worried about who's going to get the credit, oh, I'm going to go through all this and Jimmy's going to get the credit. Yeah, he'll get some credit, but success has a million fathers and defeat is an orphan. Success has a million fathers and defeat is an orphan. If the United States gets universal health care, that's good for everybody. That's good for everybody in this nation. So every person that worked on universal health care can take credit for it. Every person that was on the right side of history can take credit for it. We're in a pandemic. Universal health care, this is a prescription that fits the diagnosis. This is a solution that fits the problem. The punishment fits the crime. America, you put them notice. You don't know how to fucking take care of this tiny little... You know, SARS-2, you don't know how to take, you already had SARS-1, you don't know how to take care of SARS-2. We need to get universal health care.
The solution fits the crime, and then with the economy, 2000 bucks. So, the, you know, it would be incredible to actually get a Congress or a U.S. government that the solutions actually fit the problem. That would be incredible, wouldn't it? The people who've actually put their bodies on the front line, who've done real work when it comes to moving the needle on this discussion, uh, i.e. not YouTube. Sorry. Um, there's some really good thoughts and, and, and um, tweet threads about this. A.D. Barkin, who you know obviously is has been on the forefront of the Medicare for All movement. He is dying of ALS. Um, he believes we need to do deep organizing and build district to district support, um, not necessarily top down um, work that we haven't done yet. Dave Sorota wrote a great. I don't believe that Francesca Fiorentini has any kind of local district health care apparatus that, you know, they're going to use as a model for the nation. A lot of this does sound a little bit like bullshit. Peace in the Jacobin basically outlining, you know, hey, we changed the head of the Ways and Means Committee. Like lots of other wonky ways that we can build support for Medicare for all. But the so we got a lot of wonky ways. Is that, is that the direction we're going, Francesca, the wonky, the wonky path? We got this one idea that's really popular, and it's right, and it's, you know, we could actually get something for it, but we got the, you know, the path less traveled, the wonky path that just, it just goes over the Grand Canyon. It just... The real thing to me, and I know, um, I know not everyone agrees with this, but this is what I'm going to say. The real thing to me is where this entire discussion came from. It matters. It matters. Because two weeks ago, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez engaged in an online discussion brought up um, by an L.A. Charger, Justin Jackson, um, that basically was an ultimatum issued by the YouTube Internet celebrity and uh, headliner of Flappers Comedy Club, and pretty much only Flappers, uh, Jimmy... I didn't know he worked at Flappers Comedy Club, so Francesca inadvertently gave Jimmy a plug anyways. Sure. <laughs> Jimmy Dore, and the ultimatum was, you better bring this or else you're not a, a real progressive, right? That is it. And when I saw this two weeks ago, I was like, I know exactly where this ends. I know exactly what is happening. And the reason that I know exactly what, how this ends and what is going to happen is because I've been in the crosshairs of Jimmy Dore and Jimmy Dore's trolls before. <laughs> and um, part of the reason that I was was actually because he called a friend of mine and journalist who we're going to have on the show very, very, very shortly a CIA operative. Okay, and that guy turned out to be very boring, and Francesca said that she wanted to be best friends with him, and he didn't seem to be interested in that. So the uh, I don't know how much danger he was actually in because he you know, said something about Twitter or what have you. Um, and it makes it seem like, okay, so, um, let's see, she had mentioned something that I was going to... An independent journalist in Syria calling him a CIA operative. You know how dangerous that is? Mm -hmm. CIA operative slash ISIS slash, uh, whatever the hell else he invented. And because I asked him to not call my friend an independent journalist a CIA operative, he then went off on me calling me a piece of shit, a coward... She's going to say uh, it, eventually, too, that uh, it sounds like Jimmy Dore is negging. And the tactic of negging is you're just negative and you put a person down so much until eventually they're like, God, don't they like me? Do they like me? And it makes them confused. And then, you know, they're yours, right? So it's like a terrible way. It's a, it's a terrible tactic for a terrible man to get a woman. It just insult her until, you know, she's like, God, uh, quit insulting me. Just. Tell me what it is you want me to do. I'll do it. And so Francesca is saying that's what it sounds like Jimmy Dore was doing with this debate on Twitter was that he was negging her. So he was sitting there saying, fuck you, fuck you. If you want to, you know, defend your position, come on my show. Bill O'Reilly used to do this shit. And, you know, there's pros and cons to the thing. By being on the show, you're, you know, live in front of the world. You can't say, oh, they said this and they said that. And then, no, oh, no, I didn't. But there is a value to have a private conversation, but there's also a value to a public conversation, too. Right? To come and on the fucking show. Uh, he just nags me. I think this is how he does things with women. Is he just nags them. Like, he probably just with his wife was like, oh, come on. Oh, you're too ugly to find someone else. Like, that's, like, that's the energy. 
or maybe it was come on my show, babe, and then like marriage proposal. <laughs> Serious though. This is. That could be, um, you know, a, a tactic that Jimmy was using to neg the person onto the show to insult Francesca and then, all right, come on to my show and then defend your position. Yeah, that might have been his tactic. And, you know, Bill O'Reilly used to do that shit. There's, like I said, there's pros and cons to the thing because, yeah, Bill O'Reilly's a piece of shit. Why would you want to give him ratings? But the best way to confront Bill O'Reilly, do it right on his show, right? He says, come right on the show. And, um... And, yeah, he's a fucking bully, and he'll cut your mic and do this and do that, and he'll set the thing up, but you might be able to actually confront him on his own show. They probably won't air the thing, so you'd have to record it yourself. So, Francesca Fiorentini. This is, like, the, the, level, the level of vitriol that he loved. I mean, you can see that on my Twitter feed, etc. Um, that's all I knew. Oh, shit. This is a guy. Not only, because it's not about me. I don't give a shit. Yeah. It was funny, actually. This is what I want to say before was that shit. How crazy he got. Oh. <laughs> Francesca said that she was the victim of Jimmy Dore's troll army. Now, Jimmy Dore is a celebrity. He's got some people that like him. She's a victim of, but there's, I think Francesca's actually in a, you know, very important spot in this movement right now because there's two ways, right? So, okay, she was a victim to the troll army, right? So he, you know, criticized her and then she had to deal with everybody, you know, all of his fans and shit. And, um, you know, what, what have you, but did she learn anything? Did she learn anything? Is there any value to having seemingly, you know, a lot of people, you know, be looking at your work, scrutinize your work, maybe criticize your work? Is there any value to that? What was, at any point in time, did she say, shit, maybe we shouldn't be, you know, arguing like this. Maybe we should calm down and try to, maybe we should just have a personal private phone call so this doesn't get out of hand. At any point in time, I'm just wondering because is it possible, yeah, yeah, you want people to, you know, go to AOC in D.C., but, you know, people in California, Oregon, how are we supposed to do that? So, um, and, you know, uh, confront them. We got to confront them the ways that we can, and we got, you know, petitions and online. This is for communication. So I just wonder if there was any benefit. Yeah, it was terrible. She went through it, but she survived. She's stronger for it. Was there any benefits to it if you used it, you know, towards a person that was in a position of power to make them think twice to do what you wanted them to do? And so, yeah, uh, that's because she, you know, because she's in the crosshairs, as she says, of the troll army. Was, was any part of it effective or was it all just awful and trash? The whole point was that he's against the war. Right, and that's his point, and then her point, I guess, is that, you know, hey, that's my friend, and, you know, we got to live life around here, and you're just doing this shit to get publicity. <laughs> this is the guy who goes on Tucker Carlson's show, just giving a total hat tip to the right wing. Uh, he's denied Assad gas attacks in Syria. He's spread conspiracy theories about Hillary Clinton having pneumonia. Um... Hillary passed out in the middle of the fucking day. We saw, you know, basically them uh, drag her limp body into the van. Assad gas attacks, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't want war with Syria, so, you know, I don't know who did the gas attacks. Could Assad have done his own gas attacks? Yeah, I guess Assad could have done his own. Could the U.S. have done gas attacks and blamed it on Assad? Yeah, that could happen too, right? Tucker Carlson... It's weird, actually, how, you know, Tucker is the, was, I mean, I don't know. I, these aren't great reasons to hate the person. It's not like, well, he thinks Hillary's got pneumonia. Well, fuck him. Eh, I don't think those policy positions are not enough for me to say that he's, you know, a terrible person. He's burned bridges with so many people. And to the point where the woman who wrote the apology to me, get this, the apology to me that Jimmy was forced to issue when he went after me and Shane, I know that person. I know that person and he no longer talks. He didn't even write it himself. Somebody else did. Also, BT Dubs, he was on a, a vacation to Venice when he was uh, berating. BT Dubs, by the way. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, when he was sitting there shitting all over me on Twitter, uh, he was on vacation in Venice just living it up. Living the dream, right? Oh, yeah, you're trying to stop the war in Venice, Italy, on vacation, tweeting. 
So, okay, in Francesca Fiorentina's defense, and I think Jimmy Dore needs to apologize to her again and reach out to her and try to win people over. It sounds to me that Jimmy Dore needs to be more diplomatic. He's got this thing where you yell and it's good broadcasting and it's good TV, and so he knows how to do that. He's an entertainer who knows how to get people's attention. So Jimmy Dore is, you know, doing exactly what he is supposed to do. That's his role. That's his role as an outsider. So... In Francesca Fiorentini's defense, him saying that about the operative and putting him in danger, that could be something that's crazy. So I think he should apologize. She says clearly she's not happy with the apology because uh, apparently Jimmy Dore got somebody else to write an apology letter for her, so he paid somebody to write the apology. And then, uh, so I think Jimmy Dore should do it again and do it, you know, um, and, and in earnest, don't put people, you know, in danger with your comments. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to change the world. But that's the same shit that they say about Julian Assange and Edward Snowden, that they leaked all this information and then they, you know, it was made the people out in the field. It was more dangerous for them. I mean, it could be. There was that one guy at sea. Who is it? Uh, we Are Change. He was in Germany and they started attacking him, calling him a fascist. I don't know if he's a fascist. He's definitely right-wing and more anarchist than he is left-wing. And so that was information they were able to glean from Twitter. They thought that he was a fascist, so he went to Germany and started getting attacked all over the place. And so, yeah, um, Francesca Fiorentini says that she leans no. She's in favor of Medicare for all. So she, this, a lot of these progressives, it seems like they're on the fence, and they very much could easily become an ally. It could easily, you know, for French. So I want to, I want to keep a hold, you know, uh, keep a hold of some of these folks and actually have a conversation with them. So I'm gonna thank Francesca for adding, to, you know, to the debate. She was very, you know, she wasn't mean and shitty. She just kind of, you know, put her side. This is what happened to me. This is why. Yeah, the idea might be okay, but Jimmy Dore is the problem, and you know, uh, he's not the, okay. Maybe for you. And I feel like only Francesca could say that, though, because of she has some personal shit with them. But Jimmy Dore, I think, should apologize to Francesca Fiorentini. She should be more diplomatic. You know, don't invite her on your don't invite her on your show. Go to her show. Help her promote her shit. You know, defend your position on her show, Jimmy Dore. So Jimmy Dore could do something to help repair this relationship with Francesca Fiorentini, and I think he should. I think he should try to be diplomatic and try to, you know, fix all these, you know, relationships with these people that just want to fucking sh Is there a solution? What would Jimmy Dore have to do for Francesca to forgive Jimmy enough to get universal health care for America? I would like to know that. And I would pitch it to Jimmy and see if he would do it because I'm not, a, you know, I don't know Jimmy, but this, maybe he'll, I'll send, you know, I'll tag him on something on Twitter. So maybe he'll read it. Maybe somebody in his staff will read it. So, yeah, Jimmy Dore apologized. It wasn't good enough that he needs to do it again. She's clearly still mad about the damn thing. And, you know, she makes a lot of good points, but my main point is that, you know, she leans no. She's almost there. For Francesca Fiorentini, it's all about Jimmy Dore to her, but it's not about it, Jimmy Dore. There's poor kids in America that don't have health care. Who gives a shit about those poor kids? There was a guy that froze to death in Cincinnati on Christmas time. Fucking froze to death. Millions of people walking past him. Middle class. How many wealthy motherfuckers walk past that homeless guy? I don't even know his fucking name. And now he's dead and gone. So just how many, you know, how many poor people, adults, children, how many poor people in America don't have health care during a pandemic? Do we actually give a shit about each other? Universal health care is life. How come our government doesn't care about our own lives? Medicare for all is bigger than Jimmy. It's bigger than Francesca. It's bigger than Jonathan. It's bigger than all of us. There's kids out there suffering. So if Francesca doesn't get the apology, I'll apologize for him. Sorry, Francesca. Sorry Jimmy was a dick to you for that Syria issue, and he wasn't listening. He wasn't being, but uh, can you get past it, or can you get over it, or can you, 
you know, don't don't ever forget, don't forgive, remember it, be pissed at Jimmy forever and ever. Jimmy, what a piece of shit, right? What an asshole. Can we get some Medicare for all? For America? Can we do that? <laughs>